Um, so let me go ahead and start. Um, my name is Eric, and, and I'm running Dolby Developer Program with Bates in San Francisco. And uh, you might be wondering what we're talking about here. Dolby Audio comes to the web. Um, so I'll talk about this in a few minutes. But uh, we are basically venturing into HTML, and I'll go into that. Uh, but before I do that, I want to let you guys know that we are giving away a really, really nice pair of headphones here. So all you have to do is register on developer.dolby.com and use promo code connectjs2015. Um, chances are high someone is going to win. So I would go ahead and do that. Um, they're 200 bucks and they're really, really cool. Um, if you don't take it, I'll, I'll take it myself. I don't know. Um, all right. So just a little bit about me. Um, and by the way, I'll do this at the end of the session. Uh, what's going on with my... All right, about me. Uh, I live in San Francisco, as I mentioned. Uh, I was born in Raleigh, North Carolina, born and raised. Um, I like to point this out, just for this audience. Do you guys actually know where North Carolina is? Uh, if I ask that question in California, they're like, what's North Carolina? Uh, I am a new dad. I'm having number two uh, coming up. And as you can see, my kid over there is drinking a beer, kind of. Uh, San Francisco has this whole like hipster uh, uh, era going on right now, so I'm starting really young. They love drinking food uh, I used to work at Ericsson. Uh, I did that for about nine years, and then I went over to Sony uh, for about three years. Barnes & Noble uh, worked on the e-reader, so I actually helped build the app store for the Barnes & Noble e-reader book. I did that for a couple of years, and now I'm at Dolby Labs uh, communicating new solutions and tools for app development. Um, and I secretly like a game called Heroes of Dragon Age. It's on both iOS and Android. I've been playing it for about three years now, and I've spent hundreds of dollars on it. Just don't tell my wife that. Um, but uh, I don't play games, so the fact that I've been playing a game is, is, is pretty astonishing. Um, so I want to ask you guys a question, um, and it's going to be this one. I'm sorry if you're seeing weird things happening on screen. It's fast forwarding on Facebook, like having you backtrack. Uh, Question to the audience. What is the common denominator with all these products? And I guys, I guys want you to think about me when you answer this question. Because whoever answers it right, I do have a $25 gift card that I need to give away. So anyone can raise their hand and just spit out any answer. Sound? Yeah. Um, specifically Sony sound. Uh, Dolby sound, I'm sorry. This is yours. So um, Dolby is actually in all these devices. Uh, ranging from the Amazon Kindle Fire tablet all the way to the brand new Apple TV that was just announced three weeks ago. Um, and what I'd like to show here is that they're all mobile devices. I'm not showing it to you either. They're going all mobile. Um, and the reason I do that is because Dolby Labs is starting to focus in this space. We're head over heels and we're committing to this space. So if you take a look at tablets and PCs and gaming and, you know, uh, desktops. Uh, we're, we're at over 2 billion devices right now, and that's only going to grow. Um, and, uh, and, and what's interesting here, I know you guys have asked this question, what is it that Dolby sells? What is it that we sell? You know, you have uh, some of the TVs, Apple TVs, their products. We actually sell software. We sell the decoder in these devices. So at each and every one of these devices is a Dolby decoder. And the reason for that is that a lot of content creators will encode their content with Dolby Signal Plus. Uh, you have Hollywood doing it, you have the NBC, ABC, the world doing that. Where, whereas you need to have a decoder built into these devices so that that product, that content, can actually play on device. Um, so at a high level, this is what we do. We provide tools and workflows for content creators and app developers. Basically, allowing content creators to create really compelling and interesting experiences for the users. Secondly, we provide a decoder to hardware manufacturers so that way that content that's supposed to be super impressive can play back on that device. So basically, everyone wins. The content creator is happy, the end consumer is happy, the hardware manufacturer says, My Samsung phone sounds better than an Apple phone, for example, right? So, so everyone wins. and we actually make all our money on number two. So we give away our tools for free, and we give, uh, and then we sell our product to uh, to the Samsung and the LGs and the Microsofts of the world. All right. Uh, here's a good example that I like to give, um, and.
and that is broadcasting, uh, this broadcast workflow. So Dolby is actually broken into three groups. The first one is broadcast, the second one is cinema, and the third one is for uh, what we call internally media, which is uh, mobile tablet media. Uh, broadcasting is an interesting uh, scenario for us because uh, back in the 60s, these companies on the left were trying to identify what type of audio format they would be using for these so-called set-top TV boxes back in the 60s. And what happened is, historically, uh, Ray Dolby, the founder of Dolby, uh, was the only guy living in a team of 10 who were the only ones that had any audio equipment. So by luck, sheer sure luck, these companies were supporting for that all together. They reached out to Ray Dolby and said, we'd like to use your audio format. And what happened is, Dolby became dead. So every TV, every home theater system has Dolby built in, has our decoder built in. And uh, if you look at today's day, you might see your Samsung, the LG, you might have. What if they remove Dolby from their TV? They won't do that. Because you're watching the Super Bowl on, on, on TV, and you have a non Dolby TV, you're not going to hear the sound. So we create a stickiness, both with the content side of the world, and the hardware manufacturers. So if you take a look at this uh, example number two, we do the same thing in the Hollywood industry. We create a tool so that the movies that gravity is being dragged down. We provide all the mixing tools, all the workflows, and you've got the Guillermo de Toro, you have the James Cameron, you've got Steven Spielberg saying, we want to use Dolby in our, in our movies. George Lucas, for example, I think he's Star Wars. Dolby finds everything in their movie. Uh, and the great thing about that is by the time it hit the cinema down to the home theater system, which is Blu-ray and DVD, then you start getting the OTT providers like Netflix and streaming in Dolby. Uh, but there's one little catch here, and this is why I'm kind of here today, and I'll talk about it a little bit of what we're doing with ML, is Netflix delivers and transposes that Dolby original content into AAC. AAC is the file format that I think many of you are probably aware of. Uh, and that therein lies the challenge. When Netflix actually transposes their content to AAC, there are limitations with that format. And this is one of the limitations right here. They have different files, variations, and gravity that they have to send to each device. And that can be a problem both for bandwidth resources, uh, automation, etc. So this takes up a lot of space having to deliver three different types of variations of files to three different files. Uh, and the reason they do that is because they know if we just transfer something into a PC, which has a couple of speakers, you know, you have an iPad, and you want to have four speakers, they want to optimize that experience best for the consumer. So they'll deliver that data content to that device. You don't want to play that same content on a single speaker or phone. It just won't sound as good. And, you know, they, they do all sorts of variations to manipulation of high dynamic range, et cetera. So they have to deliver in multiple ways. Um, so that's where, that therein lies our, my, my answer to your question, which was, I want, everyone wants this, where you can deliver one file format to everything. But we're kind of in this scenario right now where it's several file formats. So Dolby can help them. We actually have metadata built into our encoded file that can say, hey, that's a PC, that's a tablet, that's a phone. And lo and behold, we adjust the volume. We adjust the volume of the dynamic range. So that way, gravity can sound just as good on a phone for that experience, and it can sound really good on a PC or a tablet, etc. So, you know, we do all sorts of manipulations there, uh, just by using our format. Um, so let's talk about web, but before I do that, I want to show you guys uh, a quick video. The only way to make transform
And now more and more mobile devices become a central part of our life, and more and more are becoming medium for which audiences are experiencing films and music. And uh, so it's very important that uh, those mobile devices maintain the intent of the original creation. So you saw what he said there. He said original intent of his creation. And uh, my creation just keeps fast forwarding. Um, all right. So when you create content, you're a developer, and it doesn't work the way you intended it to be, right? And I promise you, these sound designers, these creatives, get really mad when they have gravity and it's being played on a mobile device and people are saying, that movie sucks, right? So, so they want, we can help deliver that experience to the consumer uh, just the way they wanted it to be. So, uh, with regards to HTML, uh, we have a developer program. Dolby does focus on many platforms, uh, but today we're focused on HTML in particular. And uh, actually that leads to this slide alone. It kind of sums it up. Dolby, uh, with Windows 10, that just came out, what, about two months ago, Dolby is actually part of the Windows ecosystem. Um, we're also part of Mac OS X, at any PC that you buy, we're part of. But what Windows did specifically was they allowed Dolby format of content to be played back through the browser. And that's a big deal. Again, going back to that Netflix experience, Netflix can finally deliver five one ground down content to their consumers. In the past, uh, five one content would actually be downstream to the cloud carrier. So can you imagine playing a Netflix through an own data system and only getting a few uh, experiences, right? People get mad and they and then they complain. Um, so our format is now available. So if you compose your content and go to the bus, it'll play back through the Microsoft Edge browser. And I believe Correct me if I'm wrong, I have Microsoft over here. Um, I think Windows 10 has over 120 million new customers, which is pretty good for the first three months. So um, this will only grow, and so will our market share. Um, one thing that I don't have listed here is that I believe Mac and Microsoft Safari also support Dolby uh, in a limited format, in a limited version, but it, it should work. Um, so here are a couple of benefits for developers. First is surround sound. Delivering exactly what the creator wanted. Uh, differentiation. So some of you are doing web audio, some of you are doing you know video playback. Well, add Dolby to that list. So if, you know I don't want you guys to think that Dolby should be the only format you use for audio. We want you to make a So if you're using AAC or MP3, fine. But if you can use Dolby formatted content and surround to add experiences to your website, by all means, why not? Uh, uh, take advantage of Dolby's business. The OEM, Windows, they're all free for Dolby already. You, as app developers and web developers, you guys have it for free. So why not just use it? Uh, so that's a big question people always ask. They ask, oh, how much does Dolby cost? Um, and I say, it's just like, it's, it's, it's just there for you uh, to use. Uh, better use of retention and um, This figure, actually, I don't have a number for, but I do have a number for mobile. And as you guys know, mobile is a little bit different from web where people aren't as attentive. But we've noticed um, in the past year when I've done mobile solutions that uh, we've seen 30% retention and engagement from, from users when audio sounds uh, that much better. Uh, so I can only imagine that on the web, it's even louder, it's even longer. Uh, Dolby content, again, can still coexist with your ears thing, that's the reason. Uh, and then the, the user gets all sorts of benefits. You know, they get better dialogue, better dynamic range. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a few minutes. Uh, if you guys check out this website, devmodern.io, devmodern.io, you can actually see a Dolby, you can actually check out and experience a Dolby audio experience, something that we worked with on with, uh, with Microsoft. Um, so with that said, I kind of want to just go over the steps of being able to take Dolby and actually playing it back onto, a, uh, onto your web, uh, onto an HTML file, a website. Um, so here are a couple of steps, and I'll go. I'll drill into each step in a second. Uh, but first, it's, it's three steps. The first one is you create your content or secure your content. Whether you're using Adobe Creative Suite, uh, if you guys have heard of Audacity, you guys know about the Final Cut Pro. You can use any of these tools to create your sound assets or video assets. Um, you know, I, I like to point out Audacity. I should put an asterisk there. I love. I personally like their editing and mixing tool. They do have an output mechanism within the tool. Um, it delivers a hash version of Dolby Digital Box. Uh, so I can't promote that. Uh, but I can't 
say that they're editing the pixel folder really good. And guess what? The great thing about that is you don't have to use their output global format. I'm going to give you that option. So you can do it the right way for the beginner and get the best experience. Um, here is number two is an encoding your encode your file. So uh, add a code tool. Um, some of you may have heard of it. I didn't learn about it until I started working at Global. But uh, add a code tool is something that the Hollywood industry uses. EA Game Wow. When they were making console games or I think the audio for console games, they have this really high end added tool. Uh, you need hardware and you need software. It takes like thousands of dollars. Um, so I don't really recommend that. I just wanted to list that out. Uh, you have Adobe Creative Suite, which I know you guys are all aware of. Uh, that's a pretty cost-effective way of being able to output, mix your content, edit your content, and output your content all in one tool. So that's kind of nice. Um, and I want to talk about two. And this is the demo I'm going to give you. Are these two Azure Media Services and Encoding.com? Um, both are cloud encoding tools. So the nice thing about it is you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can pay as you go, and they're available for free. You just have to sign up. And playback of your content. Feature detection is critical here. Because notice I didn't say browser detection. Uh, the feature detection is very important because Dolby is currently supported on Microsoft Edge. Uh, I do point out that more browsers are, are coming. I just can't talk about it. My Dol Dolby God said, Eric, you're not mentioning anyone else, really. Uh, I can mention Safari, but I can't mention the other two. Uh, but we want you to be able to feature detect. So if Dolby is supported on that browser, downstream uh, Dolby content, else downstream two channel MP3, right? So you have an option there. So I do want to give you guys a couple of demos. So those are the first couple of steps, and I'm going to kick out of here, actually. And I have a Windows 10 machine sitting right here. So uh, the first demo I want to give you is actual the Azure encoding solution, which So if you go to Azure, uh, I think portal.azure.com or azure.com, you can actually create a, you know, an account to host all your files uh, using the cloud services. Um, but they also have something called um, Azure Media Services, which is a, it's just an extension of azure.com. It allows you to actually encode your content. So you know, people use Azure to transcode a lot of their files in, in mass scale. Um, so, but the problem with Azure is that you actually have to build an app to encode your content. So what we did was I went ahead and created an app for you guys. Uh, you actually can find that on Azure, uh, Azure Marketplace in a couple of weeks. And this is the app. And essentially what you can do is you can drag and drop or include a file. And what we can do is it'll automatically encode that file for you in the Dolby format. So there's, it's really easy. Like I try to make this as dumb proof as possible. Um, you drag and drop your file, you press a button, it'll create the file for you. And the great thing about the creation of the file is, again, when it's decoded on the device for playback, it's going to sound pretty compelling. It's going to sound different than what you're used to hearing. And again, I'll give you an example of that. So for example, I have uploaded a file. I don't trust the internet here. So uh, I already had a converted file here. So all you have to do is click the download button, and you have the file. All right? Um, so I'm going to unplug this and show you another tool, which is encoding.com. So here's Azure. If you wanted to take a look at like kind of like what their interface looks like, that's kind of what it is. You, you click new, and then you can create a, you know, you can create app, like media service, and then boom, you can quickly create one. So uh, pretty nice, nice uh, tool from Microsoft. Um, here's another one, um, and it's called encoding.com. Again, cloud, cloud encoding. Um, they kind of sprung up. They're from San Francisco, and they've been around for only a couple of years. But what they realized was a lot of Chinese uh, companies out in, in Beijing want to be able to take a lot of their content and encode it. So they created a, a cloud service to be able to do that. So you see multiple Chinese companies using it. Uh, essentially, what you do is you can log in. By the way, why I, li why I like this is because they give you one gigabyte of transcoding for free. So all you have to do is log in, and then you get one gig every month. So you get 12 gigs a year. And if you're doing small projects, it's great. It's a, it's a nice tool. 
Um, and I don't know if how this is going to work, but essentially it's a GUI. Um, and then all you do is you can upload a file here and then process it. And then, you know, you choose your parameters, picking the Dolby format, and then you click go. Um, we actually went ahead and made it easier. Um, this is something that we're working on right now. It's called the Dolby Digital Plus uh, encoding utility. It's going to be on developer.dolby.com. And you guys can convert any of your files for free. All you have to do is register on the site. Um, essentially, you just, again, it's, it's fairly simple. You browse for a video file. Um, you pick something, and then you, uh, you go, and it'll start processing. So it's kind of a nice little tool, um, and just an added value that we're trying to provide uh, to developers. Um, so while that's uploading and starting and processing, um, I do want to show you the playback uh, content side of the world, because again, this is somewhat critical. Uh, GitHub, we have sample code available for you right now. Uh, if you go over to script, let's see how the internet is up. Uh, take a look, it's roughly 30 lines of code. It's not a lot. Uh, and what you'll notice is, you know, we have this video element for this example. And what we're doing is we're checking uh, if the code at EC3 aka Dolby Digital Plus is supported uh, via cancellation. And if it is, that's great. But one thing that we're doing is that not all browsers are the same. And the WPC spec tends to say the word probably or maybe. So you don't know for sure if you're getting a note on the browser. Uh, so what we did was we're actually playing a file at the bottom there. You see this word. We're playing a file. That MP4 file is actually the plus file. Dolby Digital Plus file. So uh, if the file can be played in the browser, it should support it. If the file gives you some sort of error, Dolby is it support. So we want to make sure that you include this into your projects when when you're catering towards uh, uh, your audience. Um, any questions here? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. All right, um, let's see, where am I? All right, so I want to actually play you guys some Dolby uh, websites, websites that actually support Dolby. Um, so I'm gonna unplug this and, and use this computer. And this is a game that I think you guys might think is kind of entertaining. Let's get the website. It's called Spicy Galaxy. And it's actually an alpha right now. It actually will go live on Monday. So if you guys you guys can go to the website and play with it if you'd like to. And I will actually hold this to play. Dolby-esque, movie theater-like, right? Very Star Trek-y. Uh, I like the guy's name, Dr. Pachydermis. Kind of a... Uh, all right, so because I don't have a surround sound set up in here, I'm just gonna do it in stereo. But you should be able to hear the panning and kind of get that experience. Uh, I'm gonna turn down the volume just a little bit. All right. So all you do is you protect your world. You go around and you'll see asteroids coming at you. And this little guy has a tennis ball with a tennis racket and tennis ball. And he's just literally hitting the rocks away. I think it's kind of a neat little thing. Um, I think I'm about to die, but. And if you were to play this in surround sound, you would get the whole experience. And I think that's what the creatives and a lot of the people want. So we are giving you that additional ammunition, all right? So, so that's one little thing. All right. So people want it and we're trying to give it to them. Um, So I thought that was really cool. Um, all right, so really just a summary, I mean, I'm already, it's already 25, 30 minutes into it, is the fact that Dolby Audio is now available uh, for everyone, for the web. Um, you know, again, consistent delivery of audio, better dialogue, better volume management, differentiation. Um, and then the workflow is super simple. 
You just have to make sure you deliver the right type of content to the consumer via feature detection. Um, and we are giving a, we are doing a web challenge uh, at the end of uh, beginning of February next year. So we're two and a half, three months away, where we are giving away ten thousand dollars cash to the most creative website uh, available. Um, and then here, uh, some information. So developer.doldy.com, check it out. Uh, Twitter handle is Doldy Dev. Uh, my Twitter handle is NJT3, and we do have a GitHub repo, so you can check it out to download the feature detection, and my email address is right there. Um, and the session giveaway. So thanks for hanging out, by the way. Um, I will tell you, who's re who hasn't registered? Have you all? Uh, I'll give you a few minutes. How about that? Uh, Developer.dolby.com. ConnectJS 2015. There it is. There All of you guys are concentrating. That's great. So in the meantime, where did that uh, where did my gift card go? Did it fall? Huh? Ah. All right. By the way, I'm acting as a fake evangelist. I have a I have an evangelist that was just hired. I just hired a this week, so he couldn't make it. Uh, so I, uh, I came in and talked. <clears throat> nope, nope. I, I, I just use that for identification. Um, the more, more people that sign up, the more uh, reason I should be here uh, next year. Oh, Doris, you did it. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, it, it's okay. I can see uh, the folks that are registered on the 16th. All right, I'm going to give you one more minute. Funny is like you know you're at a web conference, but everyone's using their mobile devices. I thought people would be using their their uh, their laptops. So also just to let you know, um, we do have a happy hour at uh, 5 30, 6 o'clock. Um, so Dolby is sponsoring that happy hour. So if you guys aren't going home to complete traffic, come hang out at a uh, what is it, Jack and Got some bills, bro. So, all right. Yeah. Um, you can use either one. Actually, Modernizer. We're working with them, so they're going to include our stuff into the into the library. Yeah. So you can do that as well. Um, and then we're thinking of creating a jQuery plugin, uh, just to make it a little bit easier for people to feature detect. All right. Okay. So give me th 30 seconds here and I'll tell you who the winner is. For those. It's all based on internet. I have to like log into my CMS and I actually run this uh, random generator to find out who wins. Luckily, it's only like seven of you, five of you. Um. I'm sorry? Uh, you can just. ConnectJS 2015.
All right, I'm giving you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, okay. Um, because I don't know any of you guys by name, this is it. I am the winner is Will Gibbons. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're gonna love these. They're yeah. really, really nice. And yeah. of all, what are the chances of friends winning, winning the prize? Right. All right. Well, thank you guys for your time and attention, and enjoy the rest of the show. So, and if you have questions, let me know. One thing I notice people aren't asking is like, what about mobile? Or you know, or or what's gonna? Oh, go ahead. You had a question.